Um, so up next, uh, we have Dr. Sam Almirani of Promune. Dr. Almirani has 25 years experience in life sciences with industry and has extensive business management skills. We're really fortunate to have uh, Dr. Almirani here. He's a recognized expert in the animal health industry and has served on the selection committee for Invest Midwest um, and the judging panel for the Animal Health Investment Forum. He also serves as a coach for companies coming through the investment forum for the executives and is a regular contributor for the animal health-related editorial articles and on multiple advisory boards. Dr. Elmarani has uh, been with Promine about seven months now and uh, has been doing some really great things. We're excited to hear more. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, thank you Mike, and uh, um, I'd like to thank you, Med, for giving us the opportunity to, uh, to present today. Um, I'm going to talk about Promune's technology. Um, uh, as you can see, we have two offices, one here in Omaha and one in Overland Park um, uh, in Kansas. And the reason for that is that the, the technology that I'm going to talk about today is a platform technology. It applies to humans and animals. And Kansas City area being the animal health corridor, the center of the animal health corridor, it made sense for us to actually have a presence there. Um, uh, I always start with the last slide first. Um, it's a platform technology. It's, it's a small fragment of a protein called a peptide for those people who are not versed with those terminologies. Essentially what it is, it, it has uh, applications in enhancing the immune response without giving you any um, uh, concomitant inflammation. So it, it allows us to separate the immune response, which is good in most cases, from the inflammatory response, which can be good, but also can be bad. Um, it's, it's really cheap to make. Um, it's uh, easy to make. Um, it's water soluble, which is great, um, and it's very stable chemistry. It, it lasts in powder form for decades, uh, not needing any specialized equipment or um, uh, any specialized solutions means that you can have access to it in re remote locations. All you need is a little bit of water. Uh, hopefully clean water. Um, uh, the, the technology actually that Sam Sanderson, the inventor, he's sitting right here on the, in the second row here, um, uh, he's been working on for, for a long time, about 10 or 12 years, and it has taken um, a, a good deal of uh, grant funding uh, to the tune of about $2 million to get the technology where it is today. And there has been quite a considerable amount of de-risking of the technology, and that's one of the reasons why I got interested to actually come in and help this company forward. Um, uh, there have been various proof of concept studies completed in both mice and pigs. Um, uh, the, uh, as a company going forward and starting uh, uh, this year, um, we decided that we wanted to focus on uh, influenza A. Um, and I don't I guess I don't, I hope I don't need to explain why. Everybody understands the, the, the gravity of the infection. It's zoonotic, so it applies to humans and animals, which opens up a huge market in front of us, as well as um, uh, the fact that when it comes to raising capital from investors, you don't have to explain a lot uh, for people to understand what influenza means. Um, and we actually currently are in the middle of our initial uh, clinical trial um, as well. Um, the, the, the second slide that I usually include is a management slide. Uh, you can have a lot of technologies, um, good technologies, but without the right type of management team, those good technologies don't usually get you anywhere. And you can take a pretty mediocre technology with a good management team and get it to the next level pretty easily. We think that we have a great management team. We, have, we, we build on different backgrounds. Uh, we have obviously Sam, Sam, Dr. Sam Sanderson is the founder and the inventor of the a lot of the uh, uh, intellectual property that went into it. He's also uh, our chairman of the board. Um, uh, then I'm currently filling in uh, the role of interim uh, CEO um, and, and essentially really acting as face for the company. Um, uh, Dr. Kelly Lechtenberg brings in the clinical side. Um, and uh, Mark Roberts and Mark Hirschfield are both um, um, business owners th themselves, and they bring in that kind of business acumen. So it's, it's a nice combination of science and business combined uh, that, that makes this team 
team, a really, a really strong team. The other thing, the good thing about this is that you, you realize that uh, I only need to remember three names to actually get by. Uh, two, we have two Sams, two Marks, and one Kelly. Uh, all right, so, so let's talk a little bit about the technology. The technology really, um, it, it, it comes from a protein that each one of you has, each one of us has in this room. It's, uh, it's a human C5A protein, and it's actually a complement. It's part of the immune system. It's, it's, part of, it's the complement system within the immune system. Um, the, the actual um, uh, peptide that we are interested in, is there a, a pointer with this thing? Yeah. There we go. Okay, if you can see that in the back, I know it might be difficult, but really it's this part here, the, the, the kind of the very tail end of it. There's about a it's, a, it's a stretch of about 10 amino acids. That's kind of the functional part. And what Sam has done through many years of research is that he has figured out, he's, he's actually looked at all this protein and he's managed to figure out that those are the 10 amino acids that you need in order to separate the immune system from the inflammatory response. And, and that's, that's really kind of the, 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 the number, at least the first piece of the invention. The second piece of the inf invention was really to, he figured out a way to lock the, the way that, that those 10 amino acids sit around each other. So they have a, a particular conformation that allows them, again, to activate the immune system without activating the inflammatory response. Um, uh, the the, uh, the the peptide is, is uh, EP67. Uh, you can see that there's the actual um, kind of the, the the chemical structure, if you will. Um, uh, the there are, uh, it's a platform technology. Why? Because it could be used in a myriad of ways with almost anything you can think of. Uh, you can use it by itself. Oops, sorry. You can use it by itself. Uh, the naked peptide by itself, so basically just the stretch right here by itself, and it will target or and trigger the innate immune response. The innate immune response is part of the immune system that is kind of it's the fundamental. I call it the fundamental immune system. It's it's the very basic response that you get that's triggered by a pathogen, you know, whether it's a bacteria or a virus that the body gets. Um, then you get an adaptive immune response. The adaptive immune response is the immune response that we actually uh, hear about more often. It's, it's basically what you would get in response to vaccination. Um, and all it takes to actually do that is to take the same peptide and then add to it whatever other sequence is required to make that vaccine. This sequence can be another stretch of peptide, just like this one. It could be a whole virus, it could be a protein, or it could be a spore. It could also be a chemical. So that's what makes it a really versatile, pretty unique technology, because it allows you can hook up EP67 to anything from a small chemical to a large virus and have it help activate the immune response without giving you inflammation. And it gives you a pretty robust immune response um, at that. Um, uh, the, um, uh, it's, uh, the reason why it's unique is because it's host-derived. The C5A protein is actually a naturally occurring protein. So you're not injecting the body with anything that it's not seen before. That's, that's a, a big plus. Uh, you have innate and acquired immune outcomes achieved um, uh, via the, the C5A receptors. Um, it's, uh, it can be used in conjunction with antibiotics. It doesn't replace anything. Essentially, what Sam says is that it doesn't make, it's like the BASF ad, it doesn't make the boat and makes the boat go faster. That's kind of what it does. It just enhances the response that you get. Um, it's a good mucosal adjuvant. Um, uh, the vaccines are extremely simple and economical to make. 
uh, in large quantities. Um, they can be, uh, again, uh, administered just simply by um, putting it in water. So you don't need anything like alum. If uh, you know, you guys, most of the vaccines that you get now, they're kind of, uh, they have a, a, a solution. They're call, it's called alum that, that they're combined with. And that's a lot of the hoopla about vaccines comes from the fact that you have that really kind of a toxic compound injected in the body. We don't have that issue here. Um, uh, it has a shelf life of years, um, and, and you can store it at room temperature. So if you're out in Africa and you're looking for a vaccine, you don't have to worry even about a cold box. Um, uh, the, way, the reason why um, we decided initially to go with uh, the technology within the animal health, uh, within animal health applications is really to capitalize on the, the ease of the regulatory pathway associated with animal health. It's usually about half, the, takes half the time and half the budget to get you to a product within an animal health market than it would in, in the comparable uh, human health market. So that was one of the reasons why we decided to go with the animal health. And so because it's a platform technology and species agnostic, and because of the choice of the influenza virus, because it's zoonotic, we thought that we could actually get in early, get a product out there within a market that's still large, and capitalize on that to then move into the human market eventually. Um, our approach is going to be as a biologic. It's not a drug. It's a biologic. Uh, most vaccines fall under that category. Um, and here's kind of a, a little schematic that shows the, the kind of the timeline that it takes. Um, so by about the beginning of the fourth year, let's say that we started this year, um, and, and we would expect uh, the beauty about the biologics is that you have um, the opportunity to actually get a conditional license within 10 months, uh, well, actually 10 to 15 months really, um, uh, that allows you to market the product, a product, within a certain geographical location. So, so you would have approval from the USDA to say, you know, you can do it in the Northwest and the Southeast, and you would be able to, ha to access the market that way. That's a conditional license. Uh, on a full license, obviously, that, then that would allow you to sell it everywhere. Um, and even then, it's only like a couple of years later. So it, it actually made a lot of sense for us to actually take this approach. Um, the company itself has been actually around since 2004. Um, uh, the, uh, currently, it's housed in a, um, a lab not far away from here, uh, where Sam has all of his equipment. Uh, we currently can manufacture enough vaccine for about 2 million doses for pigs. Uh, that's our current capacity. Um, so we don't actually, uh, essentially, if money was not an object, we can make enough product without buying any more equipment or buying any more people. I mean, Sam would have to work about probably about 16 hours a day, but he can do that. Um, uh, we have an active board of directors, um, and we've licensed the intellectual uh, property from Unimed, um, and Sam is a, uh, either inventor or co-inventor on, on, on all of the... Uh, on all of the IP. Um, our initial product uh, uh, interest is really going to be a swine influenza A vaccine and uh, followed with a uh, vaccine for birds uh, for influenza A. And then uh, we also uh, obviously want to capitalize on the fact that we can use EP67 by itself uh, as an immunomodulator. To, uh, if you recall, we talked about the innate immune system and activating the innate immune system. Uh, that's one way for us to actually get this product into um, uh, uh, animals uh, without having to add to it a virus or a spore. It will be nonspecific immunity, but it will still help out if the animal has an infection. Um, the market, the animal health market, again, uh, there are about 70 million pigs in the U.S. Uh, and I didn't know this until I, and this was a staggering number. There are 10 billion chickens in the U.S. alone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, granted, they may not all be chickens. Some of them will be ducks and stuff, but that's still a staggering number. And if you think about this, 
if you, um, uh, and y you're looking at a product that potentially we, c we have to sell the product for about five cents for a chicken to actually make it economically viable for chicken breeders to actually buy it from us. Five cents, you take away the money that it costs us to make it, take any other licensing uh, uh, money off that. But even if you make a penny and a half on a head of chicken and you're selling it in 100 million chickens, that's still a big, a handsome return. Um, uh, they, um, uh, the swine and poultry uh, uh, represent two out of the three top um, uh, animals in, in, with respect to animal production animals uh, in the U.S. The cattle are, 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 I think are the, on the top. Um, uh, obviously, the influenza virus is a zoonotic disease, um, and, and it has a major economic impact in the U.S., both on those populations of the swine and the birds, but the concomitant um, uh, exposure in the humans as well, obviously. Um, the current vaccines are only partially effective. Um, and there's always demand for more uh, better uh, working vaccines. Um, uh, and then uh, the, the, there's this emerging market of the immunomodulators, uh, uh, another word for adjuvants. Um, alum is the most widely used adjuvant right now. And again, it has toxicity issues associated with it. It gives you an immune response that is not as robust. Um, and, and we believe that that's a, a, a niche market that we can start creating for this product as well. Uh, the, current, the current players in the market, um, the companies are listed, um, and really the, the, the purpose of the slide is, is not to introduce those companies to you, is more to, to show you that there's a lot of consolidation. Uh, if, you, if you see the acquired buy, um, a lot of these companies are currently, uh, they, they, uh, animal health companies don't invest as much money as human health companies in research. So they try to pad out their pipelines by buying companies like Promune. So we believe that we are actually going to be able to place ourselves in a position where we would be an, an attractive acquisition for one of those types of companies that all dabble in the same space. Um, we're, we're looking really to raise um, our initial four. It's probably going to be, this is a, a cash flow, this is projected. Uh, obviously, um, uh, our initial raise is probably we're going to look at about a five million investment. Um, there's your breakdown for the first 24 months, um, and in order to keep us cash flow positive, we would probably need a follow-on investment by about half the size. But we believe within a year out of that, we're actually going to be able to make enough money to to afloat on our own. What the, uh, what the money will be used for in the first 12 uh, months, uh, 24 months, I, I'm sorry, is R&D obviously is a big part of it, uh, is developing the vaccines or in a way that it obviously you can sell. Um, uh, and then uh, general and administrative is only about 30%. We only need a, a small investment in capital because if we don't have the equipment or enough equipment, we can always farm out the, the manufacturer to, to a third party manufacturer that would be able to help us out. Uh, our exit, again, um, uh, I had pointed out those companies that potentially there, there's a, an acquisition by a strategic partner. Um, there's always the um, initial public offering approach as well. Um, I'm happy to say right now, uh, and as of about three months ago, uh, we're in due diligence with three different entities. Um, and uh, we have, um, uh, and, and the entities, uh, actually there are six in total, some VC and some animal health companies that are interested in the technology and uh, like I said, three of them are actually conducting due diligence. We're about halfway through with, with, with at least two of them on that. And that's really all I have to say. Thank you. I'm happy to take any questions, and obviously, if there are any technical questions, I'll probably defer to Sam to, to answer those. Yes, sir. You've uh, been in business since 2004? Correct. The company has been in existence since 2004. We actually uh, formed the board, and we started this new push. I came on, and we had the board together since March of this year. Oh, since March of this year? Yeah. So really, uh, think of uh, uh, Promune as kind of a shell that existed, and, and really uh, th there was a reason for it. Sam uh, had the foresight of saying, look, th there's, a, there's a great 
deal of money, which is SBIR and STTR, which is government money that could only be uh, kind of uh, tapped into if you had uh, a commercial entity. So that's really kind of was his approach. And uh, you know, you know how it is. It, it's it's kind of hard to get a business off the ground. Uh, but we finally hooked up, and we believe that we have a good nucleus of actually. So really, the the promu now started in March of this year. Do you have sales yet? We do not have sales, but with animal health, the beauty about it is that we actually can. There, there's kind of this. They call it the autologous approach. So I can actually take a vaccine. So let's say that this uh, trial that we're doing now is going to be successful. We can take that, that vaccine and we can um, uh, uh, make it on the premises of, let's say, one of the big hog farmers uh, within, uh, uh, you know, the, I don't know, there, there's many of them in the, in, in the 500 miles around us. And uh, they can actually, we, if we manufacture the, the, the vaccine right there and there on their premises, we can actually use it on their herds without having to get any USDA or FDA approval. So we can actually start generating uh, revenue in a ve in very short order. That aside, we, we think that we can get conditional approval from the USDA within nine months. So we're very close. We were kind of at, and one of the reasons why we're getting a lot of interest from animal health companies because they understand that. Uh, they, they get it, and, and they want to get in on the ground floor of this thing. So, so hopefully, we'll keep our fingers crossed with it. Just one other question. Yes, sir. Is, how does this tie into the movement to ban uh, poultry companies uh, of things? I mean, they're, they're basically, I think they just passed a law in California against it. Vaccines or antibiotics? Uh, antibiotics. antibiotics. So again, uh, this is really kind of a separate type of technology. And EP67, for example, by itself, um, uh, just that peptide that we talked about, that can actually give you uh, a good, robust uh, therapeutic effect. It's a non-specific effect, but so is m m a lot of the antibiotics are non-specific as well. So you don't have. You can use them with antibiotics, but you can use them separately, and it's not classified as an antibiotic. So as such, again, th th there's another attractive, you know, for somebody like me to actually get involved with something like this, th there had to be certain things that we ticked off the, the score sheet. And, and, and there were several positive points about this technology that allows us to kind of see beyond the fact that, you know, it's been around and, you know, that it hasn't been commercialized for a while, but because there, there are ways of doing it. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Oh, oh, sorry. How is it delivered? You can so uh, you can inject it. You can sniff it. You can um, drink it. You can rub it. Okay. So what happens if you have an open can of an open cat? Someone thinks it's cocaine. Uh, well, uh, you, uh, they can die or they can get better. I don't know. Uh, we haven't tried that, but I mean, <laughs> it's it's. Hopefully, people won't do that. No, but I, I, I would yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, we. Well, uh, so so the mice that have inhaled it have had a positive impact. So the mice that have inhaled it, we can tell you that, um, okay, so I'll tell you a little story, very short story, Mike. Um, uh, mice infected with influenza A, okay? Uh, they were, in, they inhaled the vaccine. Uh, well, it wasn't, it was actually just the peptide. It was EP67 by itself, okay? And the ones that uh, got the EP67 versus the, and this is uh, mice that were challenged with a lethal dose of influenza A. Okay, um, Sam, how how uh, you, you got? I mean, those animals that got the EP67 just didn't die, right? Yeah, they, were, they, they survived a lethal challenge of influenza and we think you could do that uh, against the challenge to a lot of other airborne that could be a positive delivery system yep. absolutely yep. that is 
that is absolutely one delivery mode. I mean, there's, you know, when you add it to the fact that it's cheap to make, uh, water soluble, stable for years at room temperature, inhalable, injectable, ingestible, it's, um, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. All right. Well, thank you very much.